monsters do have their place. In the zoo, in your nightmares, in the deep, in your favorite horror movies. But not in your living room, on your TV. Don't let pay TV be the monster in your living room. Pay TV and cable TV companies are seeking the right to charge you for the very programs you now get free. If you want to stop pay TV and save free television, sign the petition in the lobby of this theater. Let your lawmakers know how you feel in the fight against pay TV and cable TV. To add to your enjoyment of the movies, we offer cold, refreshing, full-flavored drinks. Choice popcorn, freshly popped, crisp and tasty, and richly coated, taste-filled candy bars that are sure to please you. Yes, there are many good things here for your pleasure. Enjoy them. All right, there we are, everyone. How's it going? How are you tonight? I had a cat decide to suddenly say hello, uh, but also I forgot I wanted to play Centipede, which means I need to quick <laughs> restart, uh, delete my save and start again. I don't know why I have to do this on my VCS, but I do consistently. So let me take care of that quick. It's not bad, though. I just quit going to storage, uh, delete the save, and start again. And it's only Centipede that's doing this. I don't know why it is Centipede Recharge doing this, but it is, unfortunately. So, what can I say? I just will give you a little cat cam here. All right, there we go. No, here's the kitty. All right. There we go. All right. And there we go. Using the uh, classic joystick. So I actually got, um, my breakout 2600 review done tonight it actually was came together much more quickly than i thought it would normally uh my i don't know what everyone else's pace is i can tell you what my pace tends to be which is about an hour per minute of video production so that's exclusive of the however long i'm actually playing the game for the review. when it comes to like I've got a whole bunch of footage and how long it's going to take to get the finished product out. It's just about an hour. Ago. So if it's a four minute video, it took me about four hours. Three minute video, three hours, etc. It's just, uh, it just sort of tends to have settled into being my case, which I can live with actually. That's not bad. That, that is my understanding of, of not unexpected. So that's pretty good. This is all just generally free consumer tools. And so, uh, anyway, oh, you know what? I need to cut the volume on this. Sorry. Master volume way down. There we go. And now I can actually turn that on. There we go. Sorry about that. So, just saying, it takes me about an hour per minute of finished video for video editing. But for whatever reason, this um, breakout video came together pretty much start to finish two hours so turned out great uh, i'm actually pretty happy with it and uh, i thought well i've got a little more time to kill tonight before i go to bed didn't really want to do anything so hey let's uh stream a little bit on something uh i had been streaming a lot on twitch no one really ever watched it and i don't blame anyone it's all right. But I kind of prefer what I'm doing on the G4 
channel myself right now to it, streaming. But, you know, I've also had some fun uh, streaming with the Atari audience um, here. And, like, the last time I streamed, there was actually a few people that watched, and we had a pretty good time. At least I did. So I thought, hey, let's do that again. On a Saturday night here, kind of wrapping up a Saturday evening, let's just sort of chill out a little bit, and if anyone stops by, they do. And if I happen to capture my next Atari IO high score, great. I'm gonna give it a try. Try right. nope. You though. Okay. I love Sunfeed Recharged. I love Sunfeed Recharged. I like it on the VCS very much. I like it on the PS5 very, very much. Um, I don't know if I like it better on the PS5, but I'm tempted to say I'm... But it's only because I love that DualSense controller, and as much as I love the modern controller, it isn't the DualSense. But then few, none. None? Today? Are? It might be the best controller ever. Uh, but playing on the Classic here is also very fun, and uh, I enjoy that. And that's what I'm doing here on the VCS tonight. I'm playing Classic. I will probably switch to the Modern, depending on what I play next. But for a while here, I'm going to be playing Centipede Recharge to see if I can... I've got a 51,000 score that I was able to grab last night. Um, but for the Atari IO Challenge, which isn't going to put me at number one. Um, but is a decent enough score. If I have to go down, I, I can live with that. Um, my best score on Centipede Recharge is on my original uh, Collector's Edition VCS. Uh, it has not been plugged in since the leaderboard update. But that was 97,000. That would, that would indeed be the number one score. And quite possibly a fairly challenging one to beat at to boot. Um, so let's see. Let's see if I can do it. I've certainly had plenty of scores in the 60s and 80,000s as well. So, uh, not a lot. But I've had three or four. Easy. And actually, I think if I, I would have to go to my PS5 to do a leaderboard, and I haven't done that. But I did flat in that game, just so you know. Uh, it and Asteroids. Can't do Breakout, because I need another player. And uh, I can't do Black Widow just because I am not good enough. No way can I get through those challenges. I can barely play the game, to be honest. I am apparently quite bad at Black Widow Recharge, is what I've learned. But I will take a 97,000 score and be pretty proud of that. Put me. I want to say in the 40s at one point on the PS5 leaderboards. I don't even think I'm in the top 100 these days, but that's okay. No, I'm, I'm not claiming to be some kind of mega gamer here. But I could certainly do better than a 51,000 for the Atari IO challenge. And I, at least based on the scores I'm seeing so far, I think I could win it. And I want that pin set. Gosh darn it. So that means I'm going to have to crack down and start playing a little bit and uh, make this happen. And that's what we're going to do. Oh, I know what I should do. My logo is not looping. Go. Ever. But it's kind of annoying when it loops. So I'm going to stick it paused there. Okay. This issue with the leaderboards, by the way, or the, the issue with the controller that I've been having, which prevents me from launching the game until I delete my save file and relaunch the game. Thankfully, that's easy to do. It doesn't take very long, and it works just fine. Um, but it means I sort of have to start fresh every time I play in terms of progress on my personal leaderboards and things like that, which is fine. Um, but that actually started before the leaderboard update. I don't know if maybe... I ended up somehow being an accidental test bed for the change before it went out. Um, you know, I wouldn't mind if that ever happened. That's fine. You know, maybe whatever. Or if it was just luck or what. But it actually started about a week before the leaderboard update came out. So.
so I can't say that this problem happened because of the, leader the leaderboard update, which is interesting since it seems to such closely involve leaderboards, but it happened before that, so, um, can't be, <laughs> you know, which is a little weird, but whatever. I don't know what the issue is and why it's just centipede. I don't know, but it is. It's going to be annoying. I sure would love to get it fixed. Could be because I have two VCSs as well, right? Um, that's another possibility I'd considered. Is around that same time I swapped from the collectors to the walnut. And, uh, who knows? <clears throat> Gosh. Some games I prefer to play with the modern. I find that it generally works uh, a little better. Centipede is not one of them. Uh, I like playing with the classic. Uh, the modern works just fine, but the classic works good too. And part of it is because you can kind of nudge fairly nicely with the classic controller. Um, and so I've been using that for my centipede scores. I, I've been playing it pr just as much with the modern as the classic, but I find that some of my best scores have come from the classic, and I think it's because of that nudging kind of lets you do. Now, I'm not so far proving myself very worthy tonight, but uh, we'll see. It only takes one game. Oh. Oh my gosh. That, I, okay, I really could use a ghost right about now. Oh, what the, I can get to it. Yeah. Ah! I don't know. I must have accidentally nudged the uh, Fuji something with my. Palm. Yeah, I even got the scorpion. All right. Oh, dang it. Where am I, man? All right, well, you know what? Let's do this. Let's try with the modern. Hopefully, I won't have to reset my score again, but let's find out. Or my save again, but let's find out. All right, so this one goes off. Hold it down for four seconds. This one goes on. Hey, by the way, uh, the video features an actual Atari 2600. Uh, although I noticed, I noticed just how bad the colors were on it. I really need to readjust colors on the Atari I happen to be using to record the video. Uh, it, it was one that just kind of came in on a lot that I hadn't really done anything with yet. But uh, before I do. I am most certainly going to uh, have to adjust those colors because uh, turns out they're pretty inaccurate. I'm going to try repairing it quick. Modern didn't want to connect. I Bluetooth, I mentioned in the original review. Um, it's a bummer to have it as a negative, but nonetheless, uh, it is the reality I experience. The only downside, the only downside to the VCS, it's Bluetooth. Not great. Ah, oh, crud, I am going to have to reset my save again. <laughs> uh... I know it because I can't skip through the scene. That's how you know. 
So you're just going to say press B to play. And now the Fuji button is actually going to act as right rather than the right stick. I don't know why it does this. I don't know. I don't know. But it does. So let me, uh, let me, let me do this again. Alright. It shows a little bit of sensitive info on the um, system screen. Nothing too bad, but um, I try not to show it too much on camera. Uh, oh, yeah, my Coleco Gemini box. How nice did this turn out? It was a nice before and after, huh? Yep, so we're back to working fine again. Oh, except my audio is going to be reset. <laughs> I do like the modern controller. Uh, I've actually been using it instead of a DualShock 4 for my PC. I could say it doesn't uh, compare to that DualSense, but you know, can't really expect it to. the VCS controller, the modern actually. It's become my standard. Like, just if I just need a quick controller for whatever. Um, like I said, I love the dual sense, but guess what? It isn't all that compatible <laughs> with anything else. So, you know, a, a just a controller that I want to pick up and use, it's, uh, it's uh, surpassed my dual shock controller. And that's got to come. That was really nice. Hello. Yes, I am playing this on an Atari VCS, and thank you, actually. That's a good point. Oh, I was going to pop that logo on just to make sure the world knew it. Uh, recorded uh, 1080p. that's what the output is. Uh, I have had a little bit of just, I think, local bandwidth issues, so it may not be the most stable video in the world, but it should be pretty close. Well, that's another reason I, <clears throat> of late, have been doing short-form videos. I just have found that my computer of, that was great in 2018, no, 2022, and, uh, Sometimes when it comes to live stream, the demands are a little bit too much to do it consistently high quality. The biggest culprit is I just have a 1060 video card. But I am about to buy a new video card in 2022. So.
one of the things I like about the videos that I've been able to make is that they're in 1080p 60 uh, native when they're being recorded. And that's really nice. I really like that. Uh, I, I notice myself the nice frame rate. Uh, it's one of Now that's another advantage of recording it rather than trying to stream it. I've been playing Combinera, but uh, you know I'm going to give the game some time before I do a review on it. I have no like monetary goal or really any goal other than doing this because I kind of have to. It's like I need to get it out of my head. I enjoy doing it. Um, I don't really care. About it. I kind of think of this as more of a longer term project anyway. So I'm not like in a rush to get my review out. You know? I want to give the game time to like sit with it for a little bit and. Play it at a pace that I might normally. So, you know, I just got the Atari 2600 version of Breakout done. So, you know, I figure one video about every 40 some years should be pretty good. But I, I did just get the breakout review done uh, ahead of time. So that's why I'm actually live streaming tonight. Didn't take as long as I thought it would. Could be a good game for me. A good foundation going. I was surprised at uh, when I, because I, I had gone into that breakout review thinking that I was going to document just how more sensitive the classic controller was compared to the original hardware. And so I recorded a whole bunch of video on a <laughs> Atari 2600 that clearly needs some color work done on it. I need to go twist that knob a bit, uh, but whatever. Um, but then when I realized, when I was looking back at the footage, I was like, wow, there really isn't it. You know, and it, it was pretty interesting to, to note that. So it kind of changed um, what I thought I was going to be doing for that video kind of going in a little bit. It was still really cool to have that there because it, it just kind of helped provide a little context. But when I actually went game version to game version, I realized sensitivity five on the vault is, I think, the exact same sensitivity as the default ROM, which I think is actually the default sensitivity of the original game. Uh, it's a little different because of just the diameter difference, you know, on a paddle controller in your hand, I think, controlled compared to the very thin joystick there. But I think in terms of the actual travel distance, it's very, very close. It's pretty interesting. That said, when I played Breakout, 
on the Atari Vault. I myself tend to set the sensitivity to about three or four, kind of depending on my mood, I guess, how I'm feeling at that day. Maybe, maybe three is the default. Because I actually prefer a little extra travel, and I noticed that in Breakout Recharged, uh, for the VCS, I think they have generally a wider travel path on the paddle as well, because I think that just sort of, I don't know, it just feels right, I think, in some ways that way. Um, but that's a little more subjective, just because Breakout Recharge really is a, kind of a whole different feeling game in some ways, uh, in a good way. But I don't know that you can really compare it so much. But I think if you were to compare it, um, I think it, I, to me it felt like it's about the equivalent of some to be three on the ball. When I played it on the classic. Which would put it, you know, significantly more um, travel path than on the original Atari path. So I uh, recently picked up a series of what turned out to be not very good paddles in a lot recently. I, I think I'm going to be passing them on to someone on Atari age uh, inexpensively. Um, you know, they'll have to do the work to get it working well. Um, and I think that's possible. But come to find out when I looked through my own paddle system, like sets for the review tonight, I was like, I only looks. I could have sworn I've got more somewhere, so I probably do have another set somewhere. But it only looks like I've got two sets of Coleco Gemini paddles. Like the singular um, Atari-style paddles. They're just by the Coleco Gemini version. And then I've got, because I recently picked up a lot for it, a set of uh, Coleco Gemini dual controllers. But for some reason they seem to be quite lacking in Atari paddles right now, which is weird because I've often had many. But I do tend to throw them in uh, when I'm doing bundles for people. I just want a paddle control. So, I don't know. It just seems like the right thing to do. And they they seem to be fairly plentiful. But come to find out, I'm actually running uh, a little lower than I thought. I couldn't give that guy a set of really good working paddles because the only set I had to give out was this one that needs some work. So I guess I'm on the lookout uh, next time I'm at the flea market. I'll have to keep an eye out for some Atari paddles. Should be. Not too hard to get. You tend to see them around quite a bit, I think. But uh, I guess I haven't looked for a while. But I do feel like I've probably still got some. They're just maybe in a box somewhere.
All right, well, I'll give it a few more games of this, and then I guess maybe I'll uh, see see what else I want to do. So, yeah, I mean, I see them at flea markets all the time, and and like I say, I I thought I had a set of original, just plain Atari tablets. Um, at least one set, or a couple of. I've had multiple sets of these. Like I've had probably a dozen sets of these. But I thought I had set aside for myself just a set of standard Atari paddles. But when I went looking, all I could find was my Super Gemini. Uh, which is cool, but... I hope I didn't give away my... <laughs> I have plenty of driving controllers. That's for sure. I like four driving controllers. For all those four player games of Indy 550. Yeah. But I always want to make sure I've got enough for a good game of four player Warlords. Uh, so I've got to have at least two very good working paddles. And I do like those Gemini paddles. Uh, they're very. Uh, they're just in very good condition, and they play very well. Like, there's very little jitter, if any, um, and all four of them are in good condition, which is nice. So that's why they're kind of my default anyway, but, but I thought I had one. You know, I do actually, I mean, I do have more, because, like, I've got some, I've got a box, Vader, and, uh, box, uh, yeah, Sears Video Arcade 2. So I guess that, all of the, no, the SVD 2 stuff. So I just, the Vader, the only box, sorry. No, that's not true. Got a box uh, for a switch. Or, no, a box uh, non chess piece. Six switch. Well, as long as my score keeps going up, I'll keep playing, but, uh... I say my general good game average is probably in the 50s or 60s. I have enough scores in these 60s through 80s to largely fill up my top 10. I think maybe starts in the 50s. Maybe a and then, uh, my best score is 97,000. Get those patches, or those, uh, buttons in there. <laughs> I don't think anyone's gonna beat that. But I can't really claim that that's... generally me. That was, that was a particularly inspired good game.
so I don't know. Uh, what are you, uh, if you, if anyone's in chat and feels like typing, uh, what are you up to tonight? Any of you, uh, sitting around playing on your VCS, perhaps? So far, 2022 has been a pretty good year for the PCS. There's a lot of some fun games. Hey, you know, a couple of, like, more kind of archival things with, like, the, uh... Twenty six hundred ROMs and Stella support, but it's great to have that support. So I don't want to bash it or anything. Maybe there isn't a point to buy Breakout for a buck, but <laughs> I'm really glad that Stella supported. That's great. So there's a buck in there. Cannons there. But we'll see. Oh. No, no, no. Uh, I'm just saying, what are you up to tonight? If anyone happened to be by their keyboard and, and wanted to type. I would, you know, in some ways, I really would have loved to have a three life version by default from the start of Centipede Recharge, but I think. I think I've kind of come around to the one life thing, I think, overall. When, I, when you look at the totality of the Recharge series, I think I'm okay with it. Because it really does sort of, um, I don't know, I guess means something fairly significant for the current state of its leaderboards and things like that. I don't know, I think I, think I kind of... But, I would definitely love to have some personal leaderboard scores like of you know 175,000 etc that you know I, I could get would some not often but I could and I just is just nowhere near what I'm ever gonna see on uh recharge <laughs> I just can't <laughs> I don't think although I hit 97,000 that was that was real happy with that I, I might have cheered, <laughs> jumped up and down, squeed in internet lingo. Well, that's going to be on my leaderboard for my collector's edition forever. I have not plugged it in since the uh, leaderboard update um, because I'm using my Walmart instead. And I, I really love this Walmart edition. I think it's great. And then my collector's isn't getting beat up as like the daily workforce, which is... I did use it for a full year there. But I want to try to keep it in good shape. And since I had this uh, nice walnut, here's a good opportunity. You get a thousand, you know, for, for those scorpions, right? So, in terms of your leaderboard score, hitting those scorpions is vital. It's how you're going to get your big scores, if you're going to get any. Oh, 
use it on party zootone okay pg so uh pg party zootone does that am i talking to the person who does a lot of uh like music through their atari vcs perhaps and that would be why you'd be playing it at parties since you're using it as a what uh both midi control device among other things and that's for students i know that there's someone out there doing that I have uh, hooked up OBS to the VCS. It works fine in PC mode. Um, unfortunately, because the VCS is somewhat limited in its ability to um, have dual monitor support without like an external unit, which you could use, um, I haven't really found live streaming for it to be too functional. But I bet like a music maker or a uh, program like that would run just. I could def I have I guess I have run Audacity through it, no problem. Yeah, I, uh, I really like the Atari OS. I think they've done a really excellent job at curating a, a very, very solid list of games in their library. I don't I don't know that there's really a bad game in there. There's some games I certainly prefer more than others, but um, other than a few, maybe like I would say some of the Airy games I've had technical performance issues with, um, I think the entire library is great, so that's awesome. And that... I mean something like that. At least it should. But, you know, they are, as a company, I think totally fine with it being a mini PC for Windows as well. Uh, you know, clearly that's not a problem. I uh, have not used a lot of PC mode, although I do have one hooked up right now. And it's working pretty good, so that's nice. But, uh... In general, I just don't have good use case right now for PC mode. So even on uh, the PC side of things, a lot of the basic kind of PC things I do, I, I can actually do an Atari OS through Chrome or what have you. So uh, it's not actually super necessary to swap to PC mode for me all that often. Okay. I have a basic uh, Windows 10 running through a 3.1 SSD. Um, it's okay, I'd like to say it works, but I have found that a lot of the PC gaming that I might do with it um, just isn't working all that great for me a lot of times. I can Rocket League, I cannot get Rocket League for the life of me to run. Most of my Steam library is not running. Um, but then anything that's like smaller or indie just runs fine, and that's great. Uh, but specifically right now, what I would want it for is like as a secondary PC for some games I'm playing with my son, uh, both online and offline. Uh, and those games need uh, to be able to run. They're not running. I can't even get generally get them to load. They just crash the desktop. Um, and I think that's because they need um, a little more of a discrete graphics processor rather than the embedded Ryzen 3. Which is a very capable one, but I think it just 
is quickly asking for. cool windows on an internal one too i had considered doing that um i just don't currently have a good enough use case for it like i said if i if i felt that i could get uh the graphics uh for some specific games like scrap mechanic stormworks um rocket league uh, a few other things like that to run well on the vcs like not just run but actually run and play pretty well then I think I might go through the trouble of putting it in M2, but otherwise, at least for now, I don't really have a good reason to, to want to go through the process. So it just doesn't really make sense for me to do it. There's also the cost, I, you know. I already did buy two VCSs and I want a third because I want to get an Onyx too before it's too late. Then I'll have all of them. I will have them all. And then I will somehow equal millionaire. Right? That's how it works. Someone gives me a million dollars if I get all three. But I do want an Onyx as well. Um, and part of that is because I want my collectors now um, to be a collector's unit. You know, just kind of stay in boxed and, and nice. And I, I like the look of it and everything. Um, but I gave it a good, solid use for a year. And now I'm going to use my Walnut as my daily driver. And I want a third one to tear apart. So that if I do want to um, do a video on installing an MP drive or doing some things that I don't know. Or things that I would, you know, could have an impact on the console. I can do that on one that I kind of want for that purpose. And so that's kind of what I'd like to do is pick up an Onyx, just a standalone Onyx. Ideally, if I can, if they ever put that on sale, or if, if I can find one cheap on eBay or whatever it ends up being. I'd like to do that, and then have one that I can kind of feel comfortable just sort of taking apart maybe accidentally breaking the Bluetooth wiring for what, what have you. Know. I guess for me it would, it would just be fun enough to get all three. I thought I might like the Walnut the best because I am kind of a Walnut guy. Uh, I have, because I am a Dungeons and Dragons nerd, I have a dice, <clears throat> like a nice wooden dice box from Wormwood and stuff like that. And that's in a nice Walnut. And I generally love the Walnut look. But I actually like the peak of the collectors a little bit more. When I, when I actually got to compare them all side by side like that, which was cool. Um, I found that I, I actually do prefer the collector's edition. The lighter wood complements it. Just kind of a nice, perfect way. But the walnut's also really great. But, you know, because I think, I think they probably had a hard choice of what wood to use for the collector's edition and stuff. Especially if they wanted it to be an exclusive wood, they didn't want it to, you know, be the, the one that everyone forever would only want, right? But I think they made the right choice. Uh, 
Ah, the Onyx. So I'm, I'm excited for that. I like the Vader unit, so I'm excited to see what the Onyx looks like. I also think the Onyx, from the pictures I've seen, looks really nice. Um, and it's definitely the most understated of the three. So like if you were perhaps looking for a nice classy device, but also one that kind of blended in really into the background, I think the Onyx would be the way to go. Uh, so for some people, I think it would be the preferred one. So kind of depending on what, you know, what you're trying to, to have it look into. But I will find out myself perhaps someday. Who am I kidding? Probably gonna do it. I just don't know why. Before it's too late, that's why. Alright, well I think I think I'm just not destined to, to beat my fifty-one thousand uh centipede score from last night. So let me kinda play a little bit of one of the other games here before I wrap things up. Uh, what do I want to check out? What would be a good one? Uh, I've been really digging gun tech too. So let's, uh, let's actually, I've got through the second level of gun tech two, uh, last night as well and really enjoyed that. So let's, let's see how I do on three. I have never been able to play um, Gun Tech Utopos Rocket Ship game Utop Gun Tech 2 with more than one player, unfortunately. I would imagine that the trying to play four player would be very difficult um, because I think the graphics would probably start to uh, crumble under the weight. Um, because I do find, but the thing is, I don't, I wouldn't want him to change it. <laughs> That's the thing is, I really wouldn't want him to change it. Uh, I love the graphics in Gun Tech too, and for what little slowdown I experience, it's not worth uh, really compromising the vision, as it were. I think. I think it's just fine, you know. Uh, what little slowdown I have, I can live with, so to speak. Um, but I wonder what it would be like if you tried to have three people playing independently. I wonder if the game can could actually survive something. Some bonuses. Oh, shoot. I don't even care. Oh, hey, Daphpa. Very nice to see you. How you doing? I think more of us need to uh, give Gun Tech 2 another quick shot because we need more Atari logos on that uh, those leaderboards. We've got to represent the VCS a little better. And I'm not going to be able to do it. <laughs> I don't think I'm getting into the top 10. I, there's a few I've gotten into the top 10 on. Uh, maybe after the garage update starts working, it'll be a little easier, but... Um, it's fine if I don't get to the top 10, but we need to have more VCS representation, totally, on those leaderboards. But the thing is, a lot of VCS owners kind of already played Gun Tech, um, maybe. So maybe, you know, maybe it's one of those things where we're going to kind of have to decide to take another look to help out Yanni and, uh, and, and have some fun with it and represent the VCS on these leaderboards that are awful Xbox full right now. They're x awful x box full right now. Xbox is fine. Uh, 
I've always been a uh, Sony console owner since the 90s, so I never never had my Xbox uh, console. The only reason I've ever specifically wanted one was because the original, uh, the original. You know what, I'm just going to restart this level. Um, now that I know what I'm doing. Um, the original Dreamfall chapters came out for the original Xbox, and it was the only console version of that game that came out. And I happen to really like that game a lot. I like Ragnar Tornquist in general as a uh, game developer, but I always really like Dreamfall chapters, and uh, that only came out on the Xbox uh, outside of PC. Um, and so that was the only reason I've ever wanted an Xbox. <laughs> Um, that's a little better. Okay. Oh, oh, this thing's coming after me too. That's what's up. Okay, fine. I'll pick this up too. Like, desperate for attention right now. Um, yep. However, I will say that it is a fantastic time to be an Xbox uh, account enthusiast right now because the amount of like access you have to your full library that maybe you've built up over the years is exceptional. It really is exceptional right now. And uh, so you've been rewarded, I think, if you happen to have been uh, someone who perhaps built up a pretty strong library over the years with your Xbox account. Because now that's also, in many ways, uh, now your PC gaming account as well. And it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So. <coughs> Excuse me. But I'm not one of them. Uh, I have a pretty strong Sony account. I've built up over the years. The garage does not currently function, so uh, I'm going with really a lasers and a ship that is perhaps... not quite the power level it needs to be. 
that'll get fixed here very soon. My understanding is essentially it's just a matter of getting published. Gotta get those two boxes back. Those were over here. I love the graphics of GunTech a lot. Uh, I do think it is a viable candidate for the best looking VCS game. I might might give it to Thrustlander, maybe only because Thrustlander is so great looking. But if you said GunTech, no, it should be GunTech instead, I think I'd be like, yeah, okay. See, normally at this point you would be able to be buffing up your weapons and your ship and stuff, but <clears throat> that isn't going to be possible until there's a game update. Which, uh, from what I understand from, I believe Yanni said on one of the discords, that there's a treasure trove. Yeah, no, 15, oh, 15, 15 crates in two minutes, really? Let's see if I can do this then. Oh. I'm using the modern specifically with gun tech I find uh, it probably works the best um, and you can use your guns uh, better than you can on the classic you have access to like the guns Outside, so now we're going back in. Like, you can't really pull off, like, the Buku uh, railgun regular fire if you need to. Oh, there's going to be three more.
really two minutes? Two minutes seems a little quick for me. I don't know. I guess I just need to get better at it, but uh, two minutes. Oh yeah, uh, there's also a ton of variety in like in gameplay, and there's some seasonal levels, and uh, it, there's just like the whole package put together makes this game um, really one of the best on the BCS. There's other great candidates for that too, but Funtech is a early, early favorite. Counts for something to be on the vanguard, as it were. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Gonna do all that in two minutes? Wow, You're way better than me. Yeah, even in the few cases, like maybe during a boss fight or two, where you do see a little bit of frame rate chug, um, and it's not too bad. At least I haven't found it too bad. Um, I wouldn't want to give up the graphics change it so i think you know but maybe that's also going to be a personal preference thing uh he also has a online uh, multiplayer game called utopos which uses the same kind of ship combat and what have you um unfortunately it does suffer from the reality of a lot of online only multiplayer arena games that there just isn't uh, much of a active group of people playing it um, but you know it doesn't mean it's not good and you can uh, play with your friends and stuff but if you like uh, if you do particularly get into like the ship combat of gun tech then <clears throat> it's really cool because it, it kind of operates with the same technical skill but it's a competitive title so it's cool i clearly not that person <laughs> but uh doesn't mean i don't try probably beat that thing without it. Time though.
Okay. Go this way. <clears throat> Fight what I just. Uh, oh, I bet it's right there. Okay. Let's go this way. As you see, I'm not uh, not setting the charts on fire here, but uh, but like I say, we need uh, we need more Atari logos in there. So people should uh, maybe give it a shot. I I think he's done an amazing job with this gun tech to the most recent um, update he did. Added a ton of polish to the tutorial section, kind of onboarding you, letting you know how to, that there are different weapons, how to use them, you know that kind of thing. Um, and it really has made a difference in the overall polish level of the game. So if you haven't really played maybe Gun Tech since, you know, January of 2021 or whatever, you really should check it out now because it's it almost is a different game. Almost it's a different game. It still is the core game, really, in some ways. Um, but it's such a more polished kind of uh, deeper experience. Like, look at these things. You didn't have that before. These little things that kind of help help you out, these drones or what have you. They're really great too. Uh, in particular, I think he pulled back the camera when you look at the initial version of Gun Tech versus uh, really 2 and 1.5 or whatever. And it was the um, pulling back the camera that really makes a big difference in terms of being able to read the map and engage in combat and kind of know where you're going. It was a big difference, I thought. Sweet, really? With two minutes left? Where is the exit? Okay. Well, let's uh let's explore for a minute then. Let's see if we can get some bonuses. Uh there are a bunch of things that are generally hidden uh in this game, all sorts of cool little bits of levels to explore. I don't see anything here. I guess I'll just take my three stars and go. that. There are times where you want to fight against the recoil of your gun, uh, and times you do not. It depends whether you want to shoot backward, uh, kind of while moving backwards or not. Um, so, you know, you kind of want to learn when is the right time to do what. Then I probably wouldn't want to do it so bad. Good morning. Two lives now. 
try to do it fast this time. Oh, I remember this from the uh, original. Someone behind me too. Oh no! dare you take my boxes and my life? I like the challenge of the timer though. That That is something actually new, I believe new, with Gun Tech 2 here. It definitely wasn't in the original version, it was Unlimited Lives and Time, uh, which was cool for exploration, but I actually do like the challenge of having the time. I think some of the times maybe need to be adjusted a bit, or maybe I'm just not good enough. But I think some of it too, like I said, is um, once the garage comes back and we're able to update, uh, upgrade the ship in the garage, that's kind of a good thing.
cool. Maybe on three here. Yeah, have a great night, uh, PG. <clears throat> Ooh, number two. Number two. All right, I'll take that. collect as many coins as you can because you you use them for all your upgrades and that makes a huge difference uh, especially late well really in this level but um this and the levels uh, really need the benefits <laughs> of stronger weapons and armor and all the rest of that stuff but so far I've thought I could do it. I was being uh, presumptuous. take that long. Right. I can do this. I say it was up against my own competence. Um, so I've gotten through the game um, all except I never did do all of the packaged levels uh, of the original Gun Tech, but I did get through all of both Gun Tech 1 and 1.5, so I, I know I can.
good. Perhaps I will try it again off camera. Oh, I didn't even see what hit me. I wasn't looking. Oh no. Uh, wow, this level is hard. I guess it makes sense, so I'm not. Uh, towards the end stage of the third level. Sorry to start throwing challenges at you. Easier said than done, though, huh? All right, let's see if I can do this. I feel like this path is better. Electric things are. Let's see if I can get through the boss fight, huh? Number one. Well, what do you know? Guess practice makes perfect. This one you can often fight him from a distance. Sometimes better to do so. Just look for that health bar. Is it going down?
didn't collect 40 coins huh all right well that's cool so yep there goes through stage three so then there's just really the final uh spaceship fighting stage of four and then the package delivery stage of five and then the seasonal worlds you say the cargo hauler and then the space jungle's the last one here um and they're seasonal so uh, lots of good stuff in the game so uh well it is after midnight here uh in my local time uh so i think i'm gonna wrap up the stream it was nice to see a couple of people here um hope you had fun hanging out and i'll talk to you again soon have a great weekend everyone good night